Yo guys, what's going on? My name is Jake and thank you for joining me for another episode here at Exploit Academy. In this video, we're going to look at exploiting the upload vulnerabilities found inside of DVWA. For those of you who may be new, DVWA, which also stands for Damn Vulnerable Web Application, is a purposely vulnerable website that comes pre-installed on Metasportable 2 that we will use to practice on. So in this video, we're essentially going to create a PHP backdoor and see if we can bypass some upload filtering and stuff like that to see if we can upload a malicious payload to the web server and then see if we can get a reverse shell that way. So I'm super excited for this. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. All right, guys, so I'm inside of our virtual lab in VMware, and I have two machines running for this example, one being Kali Linux, which is obviously our attacker box, and then Metasportable 2 acting as our victim, which also hosts DVWA. Okay, so I am on DVWA, uh, the vulnerable website, and I already have my security setting set to low, as you can see here, and I am on the upload page where we can upload a file. So let's go ahead and talk about this vulnerability first before we begin. So file upload vulnerabilities are kind of a dime a dozen, but they are everywhere in terms of availability. Uh, think about Facebook, for example. Facebook allows you to change your profile picture. Well, in order to change your profile picture, you must first upload a photo from either your phone or computer or whatever to the Facebook server in which it will use that as your profile picture. But how does Facebook check to make sure, you know, what you're uploading is actually a picture? Because for all Facebook knows, I could be uploading malware, some kind of virus, or some kind of backdoor that gives me access to Facebook servers. So that is why this vulnerability is very bad, if it's actually vulnerable. So let's go ahead and see if we can actually exploit this vulnerability. So I'm going to go ahead and view the source for the first example. And let's go ahead and check this out. So at first glance, you don't need to be a programming expert to see this, but there's actually no kind of filtering going on. Normally, if there's filtering in code, you would see like a bunch of if statements or something like that, that makes sure that some kind of condition is true. Um, here, you don't see anything talking about file extensions, uh, size or file type or anything like that. This is basically just taking whatever we upload and uploading it to the server. So let's actually see if we can create a PHP backdoor and upload directly to the server without any kind of trouble. So I'm going to start up a terminal and I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see this. Let's go ahead and see what kind of payloads or backdoors we can generate using a tool called MSF Venom. So to do that, I'm gonna type in MSF Venom, tack L for list, and then payloads. And then this will give us a list of different kinds of payloads we can use, uh, or it can automatically generate for us, I should say. Give it a little bit to load, and there we go. Okay, so I'm going to scroll all the way up until we find PHP payloads. Okay, we're getting a little bit closer. Here we go, here's some PHP. Um, okay, so it looks like these are all of our options right here. Sorry, it's kind of a mess, but I wanted to zoom in so you guys could actually see it. Um, so there's a couple of different options you have. Um, if you're using Metasploit, you're going to want to use these Meterpreter payloads. That way you guys can have a better shell. But since, uh, some of you might be pursuing some certifications or something like the OSCP, I'm going to go ahead and go the manual route. So I'm going to select this PHP reverse PHP payload. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear out the terminal and let's go ahead and generate our back door. I'm going to type in MSF Venom, tack P for payload, and I'm going to select that PHP slash reverse underscore PHP payload. I'm going to type in L host is equal to my Kali Linux IP, which is 192.168.232. Oh, 192.168.232.131. L port, so the port that we want to connect back to. I'm going to set it as 4444. We're gonna do file type, or I'm sorry, file format, which is TAC F, and I'm gonna select raw, 
and then tag O for output. I'm going to call this, let's call this backdoor dot PHP. And I'm going to press enter and let that generate. Okay, boom. So as you can see here, it was saved as backdoor.php. So if I do ls, we should see our backdoor.php right here. All right, great. So let's go ahead and upload this backdoor and see if we can get a shell. So I'm going to click on browse. I'm going to go down to backdoor.php. And I'm going to upload it. And then boom. So it uploaded successfully. So no problem at all. It did not get filtered or anything like that. So I'm going to now create a listener to catch the connection coming back because this is a reverse shell. So to do that, I'm gonna type in netcat, tag nvlp on port 4444. Press enter, and then this will catch in any kind of uh, connection coming back to my Kali Linux box on that port. So as we can see here, the backdoor uploaded successfully to this directory. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in the URL right here. And then as soon as I press enter, the PHP code should execute on the server since it'll be loaded into the browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. And then boom, as you can see here, I have a shell. If I type in hostname, we are Metasploitable. And then if I do LS, you can see that we have our backdoor.php file uploaded to the server. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it now since we already got our shell. So to do that, I'm gonna type in rm backdoor.php, do ls again to make sure it's gone and it is deleted. And you also see uh, the page will kind of hang like it is right here. It's stuck in like a loading state. That will show that you have a connection to the server. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill that. I'm gonna go back, kind of reload this page and then let's check out the medium example. All right guys, so on to the medium example. So as you can see, my security level is set to medium and I'm on the upload page again. So let's see if we can go ahead and upload our previous backdoor that we created with, with MSF Venom. So I'm going to browse to the file. I'm going to select backdoor.php and let's see if it gets uploaded. So as I click upload, you can see we get an error at the top left of the screen. It says your image was not uploaded. So what can we do to bypass these filters? Well. Let's go ahead and view the source code first so we can see what kind of filters we're dealing with. Then as you can see right here at first glance, we have an if statement with two kinds of variables, one being upload type and the other being uploaded size. So it's basically checking to see if the image is of type image slash JPEG and the upload size is less than 100,000 bytes or 100 kilobytes. So all we have to do is make sure that when our backdoor is being uploaded to the server, the content type of the file reads as an image or a JPEG and the upload size is less than 100 kilobytes. So we can do that using a tool called Burp Suite to capture the HTTP request as it goes to the server in which we can modify that data that we normally wouldn't be able to see without the proxy. So let's go ahead and start up Burp Suite. I can do that by going up here and typing in Burp. I'm going to keep all the default options. So click next and start burp. And then I'm going to go to proxy and then open browser. Now I'm going to copy this URL so I can open it up inside of the burp browser. So I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to have to log into DVWA once again. I'm going to go ahead and reset the database as well. I'm gonna to go to DVWA security, select medium, and then go back to the upload tab. Okay, so now we are back to where we started. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can capture this HTTP post request and see if we can modify the data within. So to do that, I'm gonna open up Burp Suite and then go to intercept is on, and this will capture that request. So let's see if we can upload our backdoor once again by selecting backdoor.php and then clicking upload. So as you can see right here, burp automatically pops up and I don't know why mine's been glitching, but on this cookie part right here, it has two security settings and um, I have to delete this high part every single time. Otherwise it'll set it to high. So just ignore that part. Um, our security level is still on medium. Okay. So on this request, we want to change two things. Um, actually, I'm sorry. We only want to change one thing. 
which is the content type. See, as uh, the content type is an application uh, slash XPHP. So as far as the server is concerned, we are uploading an application, which would be filtered out. So let's change it to image slash JPEG. And the other filter just wants to make sure that it's less than 100 kilobytes, which if I go to the um, folder browser here, you can see if I click on backdoor.php, it is 3.0 kilobytes or 3000 bytes. So that is perfectly within range. We shouldn't have any problem uploading it. So I'm gonna go ahead and forward on this request. I click on forward. And then you can see right here, the file was successfully uploaded. And then same thing as the low setting, I can just do a netcat reverse shell, or I'm sorry, a netcat listener and capture that reverse shell connection. So if I do that right there, come over here and then navigate over to our back door once again. Go ahead and forward on this request. I can just turn that off actually. And then you will see we get a connection right here. If I do host name, we are once again metasploitable. So I'm going to delete that backdoor by doing rm backdoor.php and then I will see you on the high security setting. All right, and moving on to the high level example. So as you can see here, we have security level high. Let's go ahead and start off by looking at the source code. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and you will see at first glance that this first if statement really jumps out. And what this is doing is checking for file extensions. So uploaded extension has to be of type JPEG or JPEG in all caps or JPEG with an E lowercase and or JPEG uppercase with an E as well. And it has to be less than 100 kilobytes. So this whole statement has to be true before executing this nesting if statement, which would upload the image. So to do that, we have to actually have a picture that ends in .jpg, which that's a problem because as you know from before, the .php script we created would execute once we navigated to it. But that's not true with a picture that ends in .jpg because it's just an image, right? As far as the browser is concerned, it's not gonna execute any kind of code. But what we can do is actually upload a real image, modify the contents of the image, with our PHP backdoor and then use a second vulnerability, which is called local file inclusion to navigate to that file and execute the PHP code that is in the file. So that may sound confusing, but let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go to choose file and then I'm going to select this butterfly shell.jpg file that I have. It's just a picture of a butterfly. It's like 6.8 kilobytes in size. I'm gonna select that. And then I'm gonna make sure I turn on the intercept is on option here. And then I'm going to upload the picture. Okay, so as you see before, this is the HTTP post request. And what I can do is modify this to bypass the filter. So as far as the filter is concerned, the picture is less than 100 kilobytes and the picture ends in .jpg. Well, as far as the filter goes, this is, this is passing, right? This is all that it cares about. Um, but this is the contents of the image. And what I can do is take the contents of the image, delete it and inject my raw PHP code that I created for my backdoor. So if I were to go in and browse to this backdoor.php, if I were to open this up, you guys can see it has the raw PHP code because remember we exported it as the raw file format. So what I can do is actually copy all this and then paste this in the contents of the image. And then now this is the actual contents of what makes up that file. So I'm gonna go ahead and forward that on. And then as you can see right here, we get a successfully uploaded message. But like we did in the low and medium security settings, I can't just use a netcat listener like this and navigate to the uh, file thinking that I'll get a shell because if I do that, as you'll see right here, if I copy this, come up here and try to just navigate to the file. I'm gonna go ahead and turn intercepts off. It'll load the picture, which is blank because again, we deleted the contents, but we also don't get a shell. That's because it's not executing PHP code because as far as the server 
is concerned and the browser, this is just an image. It's not going to execute any kind of code, but we can take advantage of a second vulnerability called local file inclusion. So what I'm going to do is turn this to low and then go to this uh, file inclusion example. And we're gonna go ahead and abuse this URL to actually load our uh, butterfly backdoor. So to do that, you gotta understand the path or directory that um, DVWA is hosted in. So for example, on Linux, on a web server, um, so basically you have var slash www slash dvwa slash what looks to be vulnerabilities yeah vulnerabilities and then it goes to this uh, this directory and then the page that we're on so this is the path of this page right here right and we know for a fact that the path to our uploads is this right here is dvwa slash hackable slash uploads slash and then it would be butterfly slash jpeg dot or butterfly shell dot jpeg so this is where our file resides and this is the directory we are currently in but because this url actually points to a page as you can see right here it includes a page we can actually modify this and point to our butterfly shell image that we uploaded. So to do that, we can traverse by doing dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, and that would take us back to directories. So that would bring us to, that would go back from fee to vulnerabilities, and that would bring us to DVWA. So from here, we need to go to hackable slash uploads and then load our file. So I'm actually gonna copy this and then paste that in the URL. And basically what we're doing is we're going back to this directory, to this directory, and then this brings us to DVWA. And then from DVWA, we're going to hackable uploads and then to our butterfly.jpg. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm gonna leave my shell on and let's see if we can get a shell. Boom. As you can see, we actually get a shell because what this did is it doesn't care when you're opening the file, if it's a JPEG or not, it's just opening the contents of the file. So unlike acting like a browser, we are opening this file on the server. So it's a little bit different on how it treats the files. So as you can see here, if I type in hostname, we are Metasploitable. So that is how you would bypass the high setting. All right, guys, and that is how you exploit the low, medium, and high security vulnerabilities for the upload vulnerability inside of DVWA. That was a mouthful. <laughs> But if you guys actually found this video useful, please don't be afraid and drop some kind words for me. I really love when you guys leave uh, positive messages on my page because it really drives me to create more content. So I appreciate that. And also, if you have any questions, if you have any kind of questions and you can't get something to work, feel free to comment and I'll try to help you out as best as I can. So with that being said, please like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next time here on Export Academy.